What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Saints and Angst are as the late great Bernie Mac says, What's up, you squares? And welcome <laughs> to Track Talk, a part of the Lactic Acid Network. I'm your host, Dominique Smith. Today, there is, listen, I, I'm, you're going to get tired of me introducing you, but I have to introduce you at the time. Pretty much, go watch ESPN Sports Center. He's your man. He's there on the anchor desk holding it down yes. for the track and field aficionados. And the one thing about John Anderson, so I already gave the title away, you may mistake him for a pastor because those suits are always clean. My brother, I was going to say, we're going to have to call you Bishop John Anderson of the ESPN Cathedral of Praise Baptist Church because he's delivering sermons when it comes to his commentary, when it comes to his own podcast, and when it comes to track and field. Um, listen. You know, if you saw it, ESPN Plus, he was your guy. So, John Anderson, my man, yes. the legend, my soul brother. The Thank only you. The person that has soul outside of me, and I'm talking Sam <laughs> Cook, born by the river kind of soul. What's going on, man? How you feeling? Good, man. I'm, I'm here. I am uh, I am representing the, 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 the champs on both sides. Thought that would be appropriate from the NCAA tournament. It was a, a a great meet that I got to go down to in New Mexico, which was awesome, which was highlighted not by not only by just smoking performances always, uh, but I got to see a couple of teammates, which was really which was great. Uh, both of them tried to give me a heart attack by ordering for me. Uh, <laughs> so I was I was, you know, heavy on the uh, on the uh, Tums and Pepto-Bismol, but we made it through and got it done. And and like I said, it was as always the meet. Uh, that meet is that meet and the NCAA meet are they're just idiot proof. Just put you put sixteen people out there, they're great, and you know something good's going to happen. Just stay out of the way. Don't give me too many coaches. Don't give me an official. Just let these kids go and they perform. It's idiot proof. It is. Listen, that was a crazy. Some of the times are just. We're going to get to that in just a millisecond. But I have two quick questions to ask you before All right. we get started into action. I asked you just before we came on. So anybody who knows anything, listen to our podcast episode that we did last year so you can educate yourselves on what real music is, you young kids who know nothing about real music. <laughs> so who is the better baritone bass singer? I'm going to throw in the third one because he's low-key soul. Okay. Frank Sinatra, <laughs> Larry Graham, right, and Lou Rawls. There's only one right answer. Okay, so now listen, I didn't know you're going to get the chairman of the board in, and I have the chairman on, on one of my serious stations, so I can get in there from him. Okay. Uh, but, and maybe this is just I had too much time in Missouri and drank too many cool Budweiser's, but I'm going, <laughs> I am going with Lou Rawls all. That's the, the right way, answer. Because my man is going to tell me to pick up some buds from my friends. And so then I'm in. And I don't want to say Larry was a one hit wonder, right? Uh, because he, it doesn't matter if you have one hit or 500, the voice is the voice. And and he is tremendous, but he is not he is not my guy, Lou Rawls. Okay, listen. I am down. My second question: It is Lou Rawls. That is correct. The correct answer. And if you want proof, go listen to uh, what is it called? You put a dog on it. You'll never find. Yeah, as long another as you, love like mine. You <laughs> keep searching and searching. You're gonna miss but, me, babe. Ah, uh, man, listen, we can go down this rabbit hole. Yes. But, this one is a serious question. Got it. Better soul brother. Oh. Teddy P. Teddy Pendergrass. Yep. Or Otis Redding. Wow. So like Otis gets yeah, Otis gets cheated some because he wrote some great songs that he didn't sing. Yes. You know? Um, and as a Wisconsin guy, I feel somewhat sad that he, you know, passed away there in, in the great state of, uh, yes. with the plane crash there in Lake, uh, well, there's two of them, Lake Monona and Lake Mendota. It was one of the two, right? The Capitals right in the middle there. Yeah. Um, the bar case. Yep. Yeah. So I, I feel bad on, on, on that. So, um, but I, I, uh, I'm going to go with Teddy just because I feel that's more contemporary of mine. I've seen, you know, I saw it, I listened to it. Um, and so I, I, maybe I'm a soft spot there, both, you know, tragedy in both cases. Uh, but one was, you know, um, uh, I mean, Otis Redding's before my time. I, I listened to Otis Redding, but I don't, you know, 
I, I, I have not seen it like when Teddy was, you know, may, having concerts and his promoter was handing out little chocolate teddy bear suckers and the ladies would just go, <laughs> you Listen, know, man. By the way, did you get did you get the one where I sent you the uh, the Marvin Gaye uh, yes. distant lover and I said, hey, listen at like a hundred and two so a minute two or whatever when he he does the intro and he busts it in and then he go starts in a distance and, and then a, all and of, the ladies just go nuts. So you it's know unbelievable. I have that. The, I have the whole CD. I have that whole entire sure. live CD. I would expect you would. And he's starting all soft and all of a sudden you hear oh, and then. If you listen to like the regular version compared to the version you sent me, you realize he slowed it down on purpose. <laughs> Distant love. Ah, yeah. love. And he was like, the panties had to be thrown on the stage like in mass. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. literally, like no wonder he slowed it down. Yeah. Teddy, here's the reason I say Teddy because then we're going to go straight to track and we're going to go home. So Teddy, he had Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes. And so that was a big part of it. And Teddy sang songs just as good as who's Delma Houston? Don't <laughs> leave me this way. When when Teddy yeah. sung it, you felt that pain. And all of a sudden, you know, my my favorite is the authoritative, especially with a high light bill. You know, you get the light bill and all of a sudden turn off the lights. Light a candle. Listen, all those people are responsible for a lot of children's. I, there is no question what is is that the millennial it. they're responsible for the millennial and then it te- saying yeah and then Teddy listen, listen, even when he low keys because sometimes he gets in there and he'll give you a rough you know but when he just goes like we love each other we just didn't get along is yeah. you know you're like dang talk about a great underrated uh, underrated lyric it's like you know? whisper sweet head in my ear turn <laughs> it's like it's like man it's like uh, that is I love that, that is, we talk about track and field for like three percent of the time that we're on this. I just had to get this on there because here's the <laughs> thing. I I I've been planning, I should uh, probably tell you I have to have you and Carrie Tolson on. We're gonna do a Boston Marathon preview. Great. Um, that is not going to be a Boston Marathon Marathon preview, no. except until like the very end. But in this case, so you came on here. So first of all, I have to congratulate you because your family achieved greatness. Um as if if you don't know, uh, John, your son, well, John knows, of course, but I people do who don't know, but his son is a coach uh, for the University of Arkansas, if I got that correct. He's, he's, he is uh, 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 the right-hand man of Coach Buckham as a, as a student manager. He's yes. the, the lead student manager and the ops guy and works on the ops with, uh, with Matt Downs. So I like to think he is an integral part of that, but he is not, he is no Travis, Travis Gefford. He is not Doug Case. Uh, but he but he's in there doing doing some some work for him. Well, he's going to get a ring, so that means he's a part of the staff. So congratulations to yep. the family. Good for him. Very excited. But you came on here and you said, "Watch out for Arkansas." Five, Casey McLeod. Five jumpers. We're going to make it. Five and jumper. Baker Eight let me. Down. So Baker Go. let me down. John Baker may, couldn't find the board. Uh, I forget the other guy who should have made it and didn't because he had made it last year. And then uh, they should have had four because they didn't long jump Jaden Hibbert. So that was so the best they could have done is four. But I, I they I tell you they had some dudes. And by the way, I don't know if you all saw Jaden Hibbert, but go ahead and just give me a little one and done at fifty seven six and a half. See you outdoors. <laughs> and that was by the way, I think he only had like a ten step, ten step, ten stride run up. He didn't even take a full run up. Didn't even do the. He was you know those guys are up on the half of the bank coming down. He 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 was he ran two thirds as far as the rest of those guys, and then just you know was kicking yeah. sand out in the lane too. He Jasmine Moore and McLeod, what they did in those jumps, uh, yeah. is is it's worth a it's it should be a national holiday. Yeah, the long right. jump the long jump was great because it went all six rounds right to the end, and our guy Crump from. Uh, Mississippi State came through big, and and uh, is it Grimes from Florida State? All these guys are just they are just throwing out bombs right to the end, and then you go to the triple jump, and this dude's like, we're not gonna have that drama at all. <laughs> no, we we so, we, we, so one lasted the entire night, and the other one lasted like twelve seconds. Done. See you later. It's... And then Jasmine Moore is just special all around. Like you know, she's just 
15 meters and just by the way she's stupid nice it's ridiculous she's awesome you know um and well deserved and a lot of people which is going to probably piss them off too were <laughs> mad last year because guess who was left off the power list listen i got a lot of heat for that i know so i'm looking forward to this rendition because you came on here you predicted arkansas was going to ball out came to pass yep i need your updated women's bowerman's list after what you've seen in the indoor season oh boy so because i don't do the women's bowerman list i'm on the men's side of it that's cool but so but here's what i'm tell here's what i'm gonna tell you right now it, it like last year where we had the four that was going to be trouble with abby steiner and anna hall and cameron rogers and jasmine moore and you only got room for three this is like this is just like the old uh, the playoff. I know you got five power five conferences, but you know how many people get into the college football playoff? Four. Okay, so you can't change it. Well, so this year, well, they can now, but as the rules <laughs> sit. Yes. So right now, I will tell you that I don't want to be the guy, and at some point, I'm going to. I don't make out the watch list, but I do get a final vote when it comes to that. So you're going to have Caitlin Tui. Yes. Jasmine Moore. Julian Alfred, and before it's done, because she's going to get some hurdles, and even though she dropped a little 49, 48 of people, Britton Wilson. Now, you tell Ooh. me which one of those you're leading out. So I don't have the full 10, but I'll give you those four right now and just go, you go ahead. You know, I'll score a bunch of points with those four people. I'll win a track meet, guaranteed. Oh, God. You're, you 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 win know, the national championship. What do you mean a track right? meet? We've got some other ones. Talitha Diggs is probably, you know, she's certainly going to be on that list. Um, um, Adeleke, uh, the other Texas gal, 200, 400 gals going to be on that list. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, I don't know that as the men's list, I don't know it's as strong one through 10, but I'm not sure I want to be the guy, um, right now without more data that figures out who's three out of those four. Cause those four are a smoke show. It is. It is absolutely insane. Like I, I cannot even yeah. begin to say. Like it's not fair to be like, yeah, he's gonna win, she's gonna win. Like, yeah. there's so much. If what we saw in indoor was crazy, outdoor is going to be insane. The outdoor mm -hmm. national championship is in Texas. Um, so it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. What does heat favor? Who does heat favor? Sprinters. 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 So you mm -hmm. know. We are seeing a 10 6 in the 100. You know, <laughs> we are seeing a 21 yeah. 7, 21 6. Distance, I don't even care. Mm -hmm. You listen, maybe, you know, what what a KC and the Sunshine Band saying they, they'll put on their boogie shoes or whatever the case yeah. might be. Yeah, they're going to they go. May, and like Billy Preston, they'll go around in circles, they'll fly high like a bird up in the sky. That That's what is going to happen. What about the men's? So the men's now that one I do, I like, and my, my list I believe is done Tuesday, but I had this, I did this on the plane home the other night. Okay. So when I did my pre one, I left off a couple of guys, my, my preseason watch list I do is because I want everybody that could be involved. Right. And that is a broader thing. As we get into this and before the, the indoor, I took some guys that were just indoor guys. So I dropped off, uh, Squirrel Burrell, because his event's not the 400 isn't quite there yet. And uh, um, uh, the disc, the Miklos, the, the discus thrower from Cal. I'm like, I just dropped him off, got nothing against him, but I'm going to let these indoor people have a little shine before before these guys, because because Miklos, he's going to throw the discus once and he's going to be back on the list. Pretty much. <laughs> right. Yeah. So when he comes through. But now that it's over, we're headed to outdoor. So this will be the list I submit uh, to get voted. Um, and oddly enough, I, uh, Matthew Bowling's the last guy out right now, even though he just ran 2011 or whatever. So 10 is and, – and 9 and 10 are because they haven't done anything, but so they're just kind of sitting there in the holding pattern. So Squirrel Burrell's at 10, right? Ran, ran great indoors, waiting to see what he does outdoors when he gets out of the hurdles. Uh, you know, Mikolas, uh, like another California discus thrower, is 9. Uh, this is how deep we are. Carrie McLeod is eight. On really? my list. What? Wow. Eight. Now, six and seven is a coupled entry, okay? Now, stick with me if you watch the whole meet. 
Right now, Drew Brosley is in seventh without a mustache, and oh, okay. Aiden Owens is sixth. Uh, I have Drew Brosley with mustache is six, and Aiden Owens seventh. So the whole the lip sweater makes a big difference with Bosley. So right now he's seven. If he grows it back, he's got a chance to move back up to six. But right now, since he shaved up, and I saw his dad, because he's a good Wisconsin kid, and I saw his dad as he was about to start, and he doesn't have it on. We had talked the night before, and I'm like, dude, that is, it's the great, you know, it's the best mustache on the Wisconsin track teams. It's a guy named Steve Lacey who ran in the 70s, and his dad and I are the same age, and he's like, yes. And so now he shows up, and it's gone. Wow. And his dad, I see his dad in the stands and I'm like, what is this? And dad goes like, I don't know. He texted me like five hours ago at the Fotel. He had it on. But if you're wondering, I think why he couldn't quite hold off, you know, uh, Masaudi from Oklahoma State could be that. So could those guys are seven, six. Uh, Elijah Godwin is five after dropping another 4475. And as I told you, this time we find out sick as a dog when he did it. But he came through. Uh, the Arkansas kid, Jaden Hibbert, is fourth. Um, you could make a case for him to be higher, but he's done – he's been – he's – I mean, has there been more efficient? Like, I believe this guy has been in, like, four meets. Yeah. He jumped he, – he, he one jump at Nationals. He took three at the SECs. He took two, I think, to qualify. Yeah. And I don't know that he's jumped more than seven times all season. As it, listen – preservation well, that's why right now i mean 57 six and a half you're like holy mother of, like the number is there i just need to see a little more body i want to he's gonna hey, maybe listen. long jump outdoor but i can see why you're gonna take care of him but my goodness low um, management don't knock it till you try it right so he he's down there right now by the way and I, I i had a coach tell me that was not from arkansas a prominent coach a guy which and he and i we were waiting chatting um after a meet uh it was in the sec so there you go prominent sec coach and we're visiting and he walks by Jaden hibbert and i said that guy he's bouncy and he said john that guy is the world's next great triple jumper he said not the ncaa's the world's next great chimp triple jumper wow so Jaden hibbert's right. the deal so he's three so now we get the guys that would at this point probably show up in are we back in denver next year i don't know where it is uh, Dylan Jacobs at Tennessee is at three. Okay. A guy has just done everything over every distance. Um, you know, 10 K winner last year, won the nationals at five, put up a good fight at three. He was the sec and ran a killer last DMR leg, uh, just his range. And he is, you can just tell he's an experienced guy that knows what he's doing. Second is my boy, uh, uh, Gatormson, the, the pole vaulter from Princeton. Yes, uh, because yes. you get to count you get to count marks long as they're within the college season. So yep. that dude is the NCAA champ and the European champ. And by the way, just got, you know, got into the six meter club. Yep. So yeah, that was big. He, he's been doing some work. And then number one. And right now, I think there is a clear difference between number one and all the rest of them right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Is Kyle Garland. That dude just went sixty six hundred in the in the deck or excuse me, in the HEP, uh, knew Aiden Owens was going to be there, had to exercise some demons there because he's had some leads and got, you know, gotten blown up in the in the thousand and lost those things uh, kind of quietly. I don't know if people notice it, but Johannes Erm, who was the 2018 champ, and his teammate was there who had um, no heighted in one event. So he's out of the competition. And, you know, usually those guys, then they shut it down. They go back to the cabin. Uh, but he went out on the track and he ran – with Garland and paced him through a first few laps to make sure he would didn't get loose contact with our guy and and then didn't finish the race but he went out and did some work with his guy and then he just you know I mean anytime you anytime you take um Ashton Eden out of a record book listen and what <laughs> six points away from the world six record of. points and that guy and I I was so bummed and I know he wasn't because he he pole vaulted great, but he needed right now he's like a half inch or whatever they ended up going to five thirteen whatever he made he was an inch short so he's an inch short of being a twenty six foot long jumper seven foot high jumper and a seventeen foot vaulter, and that's a pretty that's crazy. It's a pretty good. That's a pretty pretty good uh, uh, set of marks right there. 
and he didn't have his best high jump. He jumped six eleven. He passed. Um, he made six eleven and a quarter, whatever it was. It wasn't two thirteen, maybe it was, but he passed or two twelve, and he passed two fifteen and went up, and and didn't make it. And he's jumped seven two and a half, so he had it in him. And if he just if he doesn't skip that height, yep, he's got that world record. Makes that next makes that bar. He's and some people were thinking at the time that could be critical because Owens could catch him, right? Turns yeah. out it was critical because because then nobody ever in the world would have had more points. Nope, as he world record. Through. Uh, but it was good. And like you said, seeing him and his dad, seeing him when he fell on the track and knew he had actually first off beaten Owens because you got to, you know, he, he owed that guy one. Uh, by the way, they're just terrific to watch those guys go at it. Great respect for – they have great respect for each other, and they're really fun to watch. Um, but, boy, boy, when they get in there, they are serious, right? There's no chitty chat between those guys. They're not chat, chatting about how great it was growing up in Pennsylvania at that time. Um, <laughs> but when they get – when he got done and then to, you know, run a really nice time and to beat Aiden and then – you see it come up and then you're like 66. You're like, oh my gosh, you know? Crazy. Mm -hmm. So last question. Can you expect, okay, how do I phrase this? The best way to phrase this. Is it a safe bet to say that Arkansas pulls off the indoor, the double indoor men to women's and the double outdoor title? Or is there a team that you're watching that you feel can come in and yeah. shake things up. Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, Washington has a few more events that they can play with now with the, I mean, the mile three and five, but I think it fits them to go, you know, mile, uh, the, the 15, five and 10. So they can maybe, instead of having six dudes in the mile, which is kind of hard to pile everybody in there, they might be able to stretch some, sp spread some things out. And they've got a, a couple other sprinklers here and there, which is all you need, you know? Yeah. Arkansas's gift was that they had 13 entries and 12 of those dudes scored. Yeah. You know, even Lance Lang scored, got a horrible lane draw, but, you know, made it through. Um, so there's that. Uh, I know Mike Holloway was not super pleased with how the Gators ran. And so I think he will, um, he will get all up in their kitchen and we will see a little <laughs> different Florida team. I was going to say he was going to crawl up somewhere else, but uh, I think we'll see a little better, different Florida team. So they've got some guys that can do some things. Um, uh, I think the other, a lot of the other, Texas will be a better outdoor school than they were indoor when it comes to that. Um, Georgia, probably the same. I just don't know that if you look at Arkansas, they just have got some dudes. And and it's not, um, you know, they it, is what's rare is they won't score a distance point. You know, they got a couple out yeah. of the DMR. They got two, but that's not there. You know, I don't know that uh, um, Elias Schremel is probably their best guy at 1,500, and I don't know if he can make it there. They got a really good kid that came over from Arkansas State named uh, Lexington Hilton. Yeah. Um, by the way, with the name Lexington Hilton, I, th I was thinking Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. Like, I thought this kid was African-American. Turns out he's not. He looks like, you know, like uh, – like he's he's working the drive through window at Bob's Big Boy. He you know he's just he's just this little Bob's Big Boy. Guy. Um, anyway, so I don't know what his status is because he could do something otherwise. But you're going to turn all those jumpers loose again. You got a couple of throwers. Lang can go. Um, they've got quarter milers. I mean, they ran three oh two, dude, and won what the four by four. What's the oh crap? I forget I forget the kid's uh, name, but he split 40 Benson. one. Yeah. Benson. Oh, and then Christopher. Yeah, and then Chris Bailey. Bailey. And I think I think Chris Bailey, Christopher Bailey will be better outdoor because he's not run a bunch of open ones. And this happened as well with um Bryce Deadman at Texas AM, yep. who just who was super quick, right? He's been on, on global teams and just couldn't figure out quite how to run that indoor deal. And I can remember talking to late Dion Lindor, big ups. Oh, yeah. And he had piece. said, he said that, um, you know, he said, it's just really hard to learn how to run indoors where you got to go. Cause you got to really run that 200, but some guys aren't built to run that 200. Um, and not everybody can close like, um, like Britton Wilson did. Right. She was like, listen, <laughs> if Aletha Diggs wants it, she can have it. And then she just, Never mind. She did that to Talitha Diggs. She didn't do that to a bunch of 
plumbers. You know, <laughs> she just went. She just went shout out, the, by. Shout out right. to JJ Reddick. <laughs> she just went and just destroyed. And I do think, and if you even ask Talita, I think she was surprised. One to probably get past, like she knew what she was. She didn't discount her. She knew what kind of talent she had. Oh my God, they were teammates on the four by four. So she knew, but I don't think she ever expected anybody in the world could run by her like that. Like that. And then create and I, separation. Yeah. And I think that her. shook her a little bit and dropped her down. That won't happen again. And the other thing now, when you go outdoor is it's just my lane and I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about bumper cars. I don't have to worry about getting to the pole at 200. And so that race becomes a, comp- I don't think there's an event that changes more indoor to outdoor than the 200 or excuse oh, me, the 400, 400, 200 yeah. changes because now you don't get screwed in lanes. Like you, you get a bad lane draw on three. Like I saw Christian Coleman lose twice at the 200 cause he got lane three mm. and, and, and Kyle, who be Christian Coleman's last years, just dudes that didn't get in lane three. Um, so I think that'll be uh, the 200 will be different, but the 400 just, you know, it's at least in 200 you're in your lanes, 400 is bumper cars. It just gets completely different. You know, I always say the beauty of track is like every meet's the same. It doesn't matter if you're in the Olympics or if you're in the you know, your junior high County meet, you're just in your lane. Nobody plays defense. Well, indoors, that's not true, right? There's, there's bodies and all these other things. So um, that'll be a smoke show to watch if they get together. Um I don't know that Harder and those guys, her, her coach Chris uh, Johnson, doubles her again like he did at SEC Outdoor to run them both, um, because she's now got bigger things to run for. Right. You know that's with some of these kids you got to watch. I, like in talking to Garland, he's going to go out. He'll probably post an early deck, and then he's not going to do it because they all want to go to Austin. But Talitha Diggs and Kyle Garland and Aiden Owens and Matthew Bowling and uh, Wilson. Elijah and Britton Wilson. There's a bunch of those people. Caitlin Tui. Caitlin Tui. They Tony have eyes. Budapest. They have eyes on Eugene in June or in July Tua. and Budapest, Budapest in August. So be curious to see how they do some of those, how they how they handle some of those things. You know, and this is what we'll wrap up with. There were two names. There's two teams and two names that. I personally, I'm picking the Gators, the women, to win it all. I think Arkansas, their men's team, has enough yep, to I win. I think the men's good. Um, obviously, you have to, you know, take into consideration, you know, certain teams. You know, Texas Tech has a good sprint squad. Um, yeah. Don't don't discount my boy Flo. Coach no, Flo's, I, I was the, just about to say him. The Longhorn, the Longhorn women will be there, and I, I think they will be feisty and a bit angry that they came up short again. Wo is going to do great. He's going to have them ready. Um, I think, you know, a team like USC, you know, different certain squads. I'm not saying they're going to win. I think Florida, Mm -hmm. Arkansas, those are my two clear-cut favorites. But the two teams that I would watch, specifically on the women's side, even some in some ways the men, Mm -hmm. but more so the women. Interested to see that that Stanford, those girls, Roisin Willis and Juliet Whitaker in the 800, uh, as well as Roisin Willis as a 400 meter runner. She she could run a 400. Yeah. Uh, is she 49, 48? I don't know. Uh, right. They, they up the ante a little bit with those all of a sudden. You're like, dang. So, so you know, we're talking about Fim Cabola. Yeah, ain't no, nobody's touching Fim Cabola. It's like, ooh, boy. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm curious to see how they do. And then NC State. Yep. Um, you know, because they have depth. That's the thing when it comes to these championships, the team with the most depth. Yeah. That's why Arkansas was so great. Um, now, is it enough to beat Arkansas? Is it enough right. to beat Florida? I don't know. But is it enough to make things interesting, especially if they can get production either in the field events or in the yep. sprints? Or, or even a relay? If they can get, you know, if they can steal yeah. some points here and there, you know, listen. It makes Listen, things interesting. Those the two gals from Stanford, the two kind of new freshman bell cows. And one, let's shout out to Roisin Willis, Wisconsin, Stevens yes. Point Area Senior High, Spash. If you're not familiar, kids, look up Spash. <laughs> they okay? have some talent. They, they there's you some got talent. my boy Salinsky, uh, Susie right Favor, uh, uh, Roisin Willis. Um, they got some talent. Joe Joe Pavelski, if you like hockey. Uh, and they were a power when I was school. They had a kid, and they had a kid named Keith Hansen who was just he just pounded people to dust. Uh, I think it's going to be amazing. There's a chance Roisin Willis could break the 200. You know, she got to set the meet record in this one, right? And there's a chance. So obviously, she set the meet record in um, in 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 June in 
Austin, uh, and she would break Susie Favors, who still got the record. And that would be cool if one kid from this, these kids from the same high school separated by 40 some odd years. And oh, Susie told man. me she's got a picture somewhere because I was texting Susan like this girl is, you know, the deal. She said she's got somewhere a picture of her daughter and and Roisin playing together oh. when she was home, oh, which wow. is unbelievable. But the fact that this Whitaker gal anchored the DMR in the mile and anchored the four by four is yes. insane insane the, the rain like i love is... i love jenny Beringer, jared simpson but she's not anchoring the four by four and i love allison felix but she's not running the back end of the dmr and this girl did both in addition to oh i'm gonna run the open 800 the open eight it came in second they were they were neck and neck they were together that's wow. what i'm saying like those two girls are as my grandfather would say those two girls are a menace the two of them and they mean that in the nicest way Listen, they are going to be as your, I used to listen to him say it all the time, your um, um, colleague, Stephen A. Smith, when he used to talk about basketball players who have potential, they're going to be a problem. And yeah. I do believe I, they're going to be a problem. I feel like the they're NCAA. already a problem, you know? Oh, oh listen, no, we, yeah. we're going to be, we're talking, to, we're going to be talking about them when they pop 157. Yeah. And outdoors, a little heat in Texas and mm -hmm. everything. Listen, everything's bigger yeah. in Texas, including the time. So listen. I had never, I had not seen her. I hadn't met her yet. So I went and seeked her out right away to go, listen, hey, just I'm a Wisconsin track groupie. And I watch kids from Wisconsin and it's awesome. Visit with her mom and the whole thing. And then I saw Coach Santos and I said, do you work with him at all? And he goes, no, that's totally, that is all on JJ. That's his area. I don't, you know, I just have the dudes. I got Charlie and a guy and I got, I got enough. I got my hands full with those clowns. Yeah. And so after they ran the DMR and she held off Lauren Gregory, I went to him. I said, you ought to start taking credit anyway. And just say, well, <laughs> on occasion I have input. Oh, yeah. On occasion, you know, I'll tell them, make sure you stretch, hydrate, mm -hmm. you know, little things like that. Just listen, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's good. Like telling bowling, just stay off the white line, dude. You'll be miles ahead. Stay off the white line. That's why I said congratulations to your family because you were a part of multiple W's. That's Listen, right. The my my song, if I had to pick a song that describes what I believe the outdoor season will be like, yes. I have to go to the Ohio players. And I don't know if you know. Well, I know you know this song. Fire. That's what I think is going to happen. I'm still just playing us off. I don't know if you can have commercial music on the podcast. Send me the bill when they when they get you. Ah, uh, man. So play us off. John Anderson, Dominic Smith, you know where to find us. Play us off, man. How are we rocking? What's the song? We will, uh, and we'll see you to talk Boston Marathon, all right? Yes, sir. All right, now. Take care. See you, bye.